was immediately uh, struck by his um, <coughs> charisma and, um, and also the humility. He was very casually dressed um, but doing some really significant, profound work. And um, as soon as he started talking about re respiratory systems and breath, I had all these visuals just started to come in straight away and I, I paint the bush and, and the sea and the ocean. And so it immediately made sense to use the bush or tight bush little gully lines and stuff as a metaphor for research and struggle and then the beach and for me I reference Burwood Beach around from Merriweather which is desolate and um, and sparse and to use that as a metaphor for for recovery and and breath and clear channels so I um, many moons ago I played um, in bands <laughs> and um, I've carried that writing lyrics I've carried over into um, consolidating or, or an artist statement at the end of a series. So this is um, the poem I wrote and I've, I've placed the patient in that environment. I was scratching around like a dog inside nature. I couldn't see and I couldn't breathe. I couldn't climb down to the barren beach. Stuck, destitute, capped, hopeless. I felt so hopeless. Now the white mile parallel with blue, cut out between limbs. There I know I could breathe, there the pipes clear. Inhale the sky, kick off the ocean floor. The only promise I would ever keep is to breathe. I just want to breathe. Thank you. Some of the things that we're interested in is CRPD, which you might most people know as emphysema, um, severe steroid resistant asthma and respiratory infections and uh, so these are some of the most important health related problems in the world today. Um, so um, COPD for example is currently the, four, the third leading cause of death in the world and there's no treatments for it um, and so it's, the, it's in this background that we're trying to develop new therapies. One thing that I want to talk to you about is microbiomes and this is a favourite thing of mine at the moment and, and so this all stems from the fact that in the last five or six years there's been substantial technical advances in how we can detect and identify bacteria. Each one of us carries 1.5 kilos of bacteria with us. Okay, so, so that's the same, that's the same weight as the human brain. Okay, so these bacteria are really important. We do some work with mice and mice are really good because they eat each other's poo. And so this is a natural experiment where you can put mice in together into the same cages and they eat each other's poo and they transfer microbiomes between them, okay? So we can, we can co-house mice that have been exposed to cigarette smoke with mice that haven't. And in some amazing, in some amazing experiments we've done this year, or the last couple of years, we can show that just by housing non-smoking mice with smoking mice, they eat each other's poo, transfer their microbiomes, and it protects the smoking mice from getting COPD. It's remarkable. We don't just play around with these experiments, we're always doing it for, for a reason. And so we're always trying to translate these things into humans. So obviously people don't like eating each other's poo, so we have to come by it a different way. And so, um, so we've, we're developing this uh, new therapy called the transpusion. We can culture up these bacteria and put them in capsules, which we are going to call capsules, <laughs> that people can take, and we can uh, we can get them to swallow these these capsules, and these are going to break open and potentially re repopulate the uh, the gastrointestinal tracts of people. Okay. Uh, I, can't, I can't stress enough how important this, uh, the money that we get from, from various places, how important that is to get research going, to support younger people, um, to grow in established groups and, um, 
and really to make advances that we need to make in medical research so that we can try and develop and then test new therapies for these uh, respiratory and other diseases. So I'll leave it there and thumbs up.